Lars Bent as a photography studio. Beautiful setup you have here. Yeah, I've cleaned up a little bit when I'm getting ready to go. This has been an amazing experience. <laughs> so, um, well, let me see. So, you down. work in the dark a lot then? Yeah, so I'm going to actually close this door. Yeah, we're going to, uh, uh, yeah, we can we're going to have uh, this interview in the dark. Well, we can, uh, <laughs> darkish. We can, there we go. That should be put on you. Yeah, there we go. So what happens in the dark here? Well, this is, I made up um, a little shooting studio and, um, you know, the facilities here at Bard, Simon's Rock, have been incredibly generous. Mm -hmm. So um, I got this really fancy LED light, um, which is the first time I've ever worked with one. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pluses about a light like this, as opposed to the old ones, it throws no heat. So, you don't get blistering hot like we used to. With mm. the old lights, the heat was, you know, problematic. I almost burned a model once because it got so hot. So, there's no heat, and then the controls are so simple. So, you can watch the light change color. You can go to cold, oh. yeah. You can go to a cold light, a warm light, you know, so you can change the color influence very simply with a knob. I've been working on a warm, nice warm tone. And then this is nice because you can just increase the power. So when I do my slow shutter speeds, and I kind of really crank that down so that I can have a very long shutter speed to get those fluttering pages. And then when I want something in sharp focus, mm -hmm. then I can just amp that up. And, uh, and it's small and it's lightweight. So it's, uh, I want one of these now. So we, we're in a, you work, you told me you work in the dark a lot. You're in this room by yourself in the dark. For and, hours. And a light is important. Yeah. Why, as a photographer? What is well, that? Well, there's a saying in photography that is you're chasing the light and the whole relationship between whether it's film or uh, digital, it's all about the light and how the light comes into the camera how it affects um, what you're photographing. Um, you have light that bounces into the camera. Um, you can move light around. And one of the things that's really interesting when you start learning about lighting is that light moves in a, in, in a straight line. And I, I'm not, not gonna say what percentage the angle is, but there I, I have to look at my diagram. So it doesn't bend. So in order to get it to do things, you, you bounce it. I, I don't think I have, I can use this uh, like I said, I've cleaned up a little bit, but you're going to watch how I can move this light around and get it to brighten. Look at that, how much brighter it is, darker. And so you're always, you're always working in relationship with the light. Mm. So it's incredibly important. And then the other reason it's important, um, is um, it also impacts the shutter speed, your depth of field. So, for example, when the aperture is really small, you have a longer depth of field, so more is in focus. When you have aperture wide open, then you have a shallower depth of field, and that's when you get those kind of like soft focus things. And so the relationship between the light and the aperture um, not only affects the focus, but it also affects uh, then the shutter speed. So when people look at my photos of books, for example, and even photos of my abandoned homes, mm. the length of the shutter, how long the shutter is open, is an important part. So in order to get the fluttery pages, um, I have to have a long shutter speed because then I'll pick up things just sort of in motion. And then if you look at my abandoned homes, I'm not using any artificial light in those homes. I'm just using the light that comes in 
And this is an artificial light. And this is an it's artificial light. Man-made, man-made artificial light. Man-made, plug-in, electric light. <laughs> Um, but in my abandoned homes, I'm only using whatever the natural light is and that's coming in. So I photographed inside James Weldon Johnson's cabin, writing cabin the other day. Um, I just used whatever light was coming through those windows. And so sometimes I have to set the camera up and you can have an exposure that's one or two minutes in order for you to get the amount of light that you need. So it's always, uh, light is, is huge. It's a huge part of photography. So when you when that light comes into the cabin or when you're shooting outside, mm -hmm. what message is that sending you? Well, I mean, I think we, we all, um, as human beings and animals, I would say too, birds probably, we all respond to light. Um, you know, a dark, dreary day, we feel sleepier, we want to take a nap, a good book. Uh, let's say we go to the Caribbean or Mexico or Southern Italy and you have that bright light, you tend to feel more upbeat and festive. And so we respond emotionally to light and that's something that's a big factor in photography is how, how the light makes people feel, how they respond to the photograph is the way that we respond to light in general. Just, you know, as they're going about our everyday lives. When we look at the Renaissance, for example, when you look at the light of the Northern Renaissance painters like Vermeer, Rembrandt, um, those are Baroque painters, even Jan van Eyck from the 1400s, and you look at them, the lighting, for example, of the Italian Renaissance painters, like, you know, you know, early Renaissance like Giotto or Michelangelo or Raphael, any of those, you see a huge difference in those paintings and how we react to the Italian paintings is different, partly because of light and there are other things in there, as opposed to the Northern Renaissance paintings because they're painting the light that they knew, which was darker, thinner, not as bright, and, you know, high volume. So light, it's all about light. It's all about chasing the light. And some days, you know, you hit the jackpot. I mean, there's been hours in here where I've photographed and I've hated everything and it's all it's terrible. And then there are other days where me and the camera and the books are all like just banging and good and having a great time. And I'm in here going, yes, yes, yes. And there are other days where I'm walking out going, I need to go for a walk. <laughs> so you're, how do you get those wow moments? Take, take us through what you're okay, doing well, here and, yeah. and if we could shine a little yeah, light just yeah. so you can describe well, you can, your tools. I'll just go ahead your, and I'll, I'll your I'm camera photo now. So what are your lens? Well here we got you know we got our nice little LED and again you can see that I can control the intensity of the light. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other thing that I'm always looking for are the shit how the shadows are cast. So mm. I can, uh, you can watch that shadow there move. And then you get into the formal things like shape, and form, and line, and texture. So I'm looking for how I want the shadows to look and what shape I want the shadows to be. So let's say, okay, I'm good here. I like that, that's good. Um, and then I can move this and I can point it so I can have it drop off at the bottom if I want that. I can have it like really blazing high. So, um, and again, I'm still watching the shadows and kind of where I want, want those to fall. And what do you define as shadows? These shapes right here. Ah. Actually on the book. Because the way that I work, that, the background isn't, it's going to be just straight black. You're not going to see it. So, um, and just watch the cords. That's the other thing you want yep. to do is make sure you don't get your... I've done it. Mm -hmm. So as I'm moving the light around, and I'm looking at... Because everything around it, when I do the final photograph, that's all going to be black mm. and knocked out. And so what I'm looking for is how the light is hitting the pages, for example. Mm. Okay. Now, what I want out of that. Okay. And so I was... Just when you came, I was like kind of lining this up. and thought, Okay, this, this looks good. So what I'm shooting with is a new camera... <laughs> um, I haven't shot with it very much. It's a Nikon Z6. It's this new mirrorless thing, so it's not um, it's not like your traditional SLR that has um, a mirror in it. 
And so the sensor is really close to the back of the lens. And then I'm just shooting with um, a Nikon uh, telephoto lens uh, that goes from, uh, uh, let's see, what is it? 28 millimeters to, I think I go all the way up to 300. It has a macro lens on it, which allows me to get really close to detail and then bring it into focus. Mm. So, um, so that's kind of the technical stuff, but I mean, I'm trained as a painter. So my undergraduate degree is in printmaking and my graduate degree is in painting and drawing. And one of the things people always say about my photographs is I feel very painterly. And I think that makes sense. Painterly. painterly. I think that makes sense, you know, given my, given my background. Um, I'm not like a, a tech jockey. You know, you get people in photography and they start like talking about all this gear and I'm always just nodding my head. Like, okay, you know. Um, I know what I can use and I actually work very bare bones and very simply. I mean, I think that, um, I think, you know, you should be able to, I, I love pinhole photography when you make a camera out of an oatmeal box and I think you can make a photograph out of anything that even rudimentary. So, so I keep my work situation uh, very simple. It looks simple. Yes. Very simple. Um, like the way I like my music. <laughs> I'm not a lot of effects. Yeah. It's yeah. just very it's authentic, pure, pure yeah. very authentic. So I'm going to, um, you can watch me work. Okay. I just set this shot up so you, you can pull up a chair. Um,